Okay, yeah. cool. Thanks, thanks for me and enjoy your chocolates, people. So, um, what's the open scope? Wow, uh, it's out of scope. scope. <laughs> uh, so it's basically this device here. It's uh, it's kind of a open source, multi-function electronic instrumentation device that can be used as a scope, a wave generator, and a bunch of things. So all started with Kickstarter. Uh, I saw this on Kickstarter about, uh, I don't know, four months back-ish. And it was like, you know, for $99, US dollars, you could get like, you know, a wave generator and a scope and a power supply and all sorts of stuff in one. I was like, cool, it's a score. Not so fast. Um, so like I do with everything on Kickstarter, um, first question is, who the hell is Digilent? Uh, question, who, who, who here knows who is, what's Digilent? You guys, of course, all, all the old school people know. Not Agilent, Digilent. There's a difference. Exactly. Um, so glad you asked. Digilent is a really cool company that makes a lot of FPGA boards, uh, I'm sure. They provide a lot of resources also. They, pro they provide a lot of resources. Um, so they also make something called the Analog Discovery, which is a very famous uh, educational tool. A lot of schools use this to teach students. So they're basically a company that's founded, yeah, there you go, all your FPGA boards. Basically a, f uh, <clears throat> a company founded by a professor from, I forget which university, called Clint. Uh, and he was interviewed by the Ampower, by the way, it, if you guys don't listen to Ampower, I highly recommend. It's a podcast about electronics, super fun. Uh, lots of really great, uh, cool discussions about electronics, highly recommend it. And he was interviewed on Ampower. Um, so it's, it, he's a really legit guy. So Digiland is a legit company. So when I realized that a super legit company that's, that's been making kits and, and stuff and know how to make things was doing something on Kickstarter, I realized, okay, this is something that I can actually throw my money at and expect to get something that's working at the end of it unlike all those other Kickstarters in the world. So, you know, once I realized that, I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting, this could be useful, this could actually work. Like, finally, I could actually have something in my hands. Um, so, the specs. It's interesting, but not really that, you know, it's nothing to call home about. Uh, it's got a sample rate of uh, 2.65 mega samples per second. It's all right. Uh, 2 megahertz bandwidth, um, can take in 20 volts, plus minus uh, signals can do a lot of stuff like logic analysis, uh, waveform generation, can, it has GPIO pins, you can toggle, um, it's got a programmable power supply, um, 50 milliampere per channel, by the way. It's not really cool. So really nothing fancy. But um, the thing that really attracted me to this whole thing was the entire user interface for this is a website. So you connect this to a laptop, and I'll show you later, and all the signals, all your scope functionality happens uh, on, a web, on a web UI. And to me, that was really cool. Like, I think that's a model that I really wanted to understand and I really wanted to see if this could work as a way to do user interfaces for a lot of electronics. Because if this works, I think the web, I, I personally believe that a web platform uh, it has a potential to make really nice and pretty user interfaces. Uh, and you could do a lot of things with web uh, if you could connect it nicely to uh, electronics. And I thought, hey, if, I, I would love to know how they pull this off uh, and whether they pull this off well. And if I, if I can learn something from this, that would be really handy. So I went, on, went ahead, I, I ordered this. Um, I got it in like three months. It was really, actually it was way earlier than they had promised. I think they were promising end July or August almost. And I got mine June somewhere. So uh, it was pretty cool. Um, so the interesting question is, how does this work? Um, how does the whole web UI stuff work? And I was really curious. There used to be a standard uh, for allowing Chrome applications to talk over a USB, web but USB. yeah, web USB, which was killed. And now apparently if you try to use some of those web serial, or was it, I forgot what it was called, but there was a way to get Chrome to talk over serial ports uh, or COM ports on your, on your computer. And if you try to do that now, Chrome tells you, oh, that whole thing is deprecated. You should just use something like Electron or Atom or something, one of those things. So the way they do it is they actually run uh, an agent on your lo uh, local machine. So if, if, you, if I go down, you will see the Digilent agent running here. So that's on a Mac. They actually ship agents for. Uh, uh, just swipe. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, they ship agents for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, although Linux is only for x86, don't ask me how I found that out. Found that out. Uh, x86. By the way, so 
x86 and x86-64. It's Qt-based, it's all open source, so you could actually recompile it if you want. Um, again, long story, I'll tell you later. Uh, but yes, on a Mac and a Windows, uh, and on normal Linuxes, works like a charm. Uh, not, n never had a problem, you install it. Uh, it detects your, um, your board. You connect to it, it, it basically uh, uh, comes up as USB serial, and then it, it tunnels all the data through the agent into the web browser. Uh, and that's how you basically get the web browser to connect to something on, uh, that's connected to your heart, uh, laptop. Uh, but what if I have no internet? What if uh, you know, I, I'm somewhere debugging with, th with this and I have no connection to internet? They actually do have a locally hosted version. It's kind of really hard to see, but this is running on localhost. So they have two ways to do it. You can either run a web server on this guy and then uh, talk through it, or you can have a web server running on inside that Digilent agent and then talk through that. So there's a multiple fallbacks for running this ho whole thing locally. Uh, and they also have apps, uh, both on Android and iOS. So you can actually do this whole thing over Wi-Fi. This, the board actually has a Wi-Fi module on it as well. Uh, and it works quite well. Um, so more interesting stuff, what's it made with? It's a PIC32. Digitant has always been a microchip company. Uh, and they have a PIC32 and an MRF24 Wi-Fi module on it. Um, it's both microchip, I'm guessing. Uh, yes, I love microchip. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing that's what Digilent says. Um, on the user interface side of things, there's a bunch of LEDs. There's a super cool thing that you do with LEDs, which is what kind of like what Rahul was talking about. Uh, because there is Wi-Fi and it actually can connect to a router and get its own IP address using DHCP, it uses onboard LEDs to tell you what the IP address, the last octet of what the IP address it got by blinking. Uh, I'll try to set it up later so you can see it. It's really funny. Uh, it's really strange. You got, I had to stare at the code for 10 minutes this morning to figure out what exactly the blinking meant. <laughs> There's also a micro SD card uh, to store calibration data. It actually does calibrate on, on, on uh, setup, so that's pretty cool. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. They actually have pretty nice, um, all the stuff is open source. Uh, the designs, the uh, schematics, the, uh, a lot of, uh, all the code, almost all the code. They even have uh, a lot of the detail of the design. So the, the design philosophy is how they made their DACs or the, the resistor ladders and the, the ADCs and all that stuff. It's all documented really well. So it's also a good learning project if you want to learn this. Um, I decided to make a case for it. Um, even the, oh, OK, never mind. There's a video of, it's fine. Uh, there's a video of me making a case, but here's a case. I've got it here. You can take a look later. Uh, the design for the case, the 3D printing design, is also online. Um, so I thought, I was thinking about this. The cool use cases for this would be uh, for cheap people like me. I don't have a scope at home. I have a scope at work. If I need to just scope something quickly at, uh, at home, low speed, nothing fancy, could really work. Actually, we did that the other day, and it did save us a little bit of time. Uh, portable logic analyzer, it kind of works all right as a logic analyzer. I'll show you some issues with it later. And also, it's super cool because it's Wi-Fi, so you can actually put this on, you know, if you have a robot, you can put it on the robot, and it's moving around, and it can still scope it. So that's actually a very, very handy use case. Um, a bunch of fails. Uh, 6.25 mega samples per second is way too slow to see anything nice. I'll show you some signals later, and uh, it, they don't look nice. I mean, they're there. They're proper. It's just your sampling rate isn't high enough to for your square waves to look very square. Um, the power supply is 50 milliamps, which is kind of useless as a power supply. They gave a bunch of accessories like these clippy pins, and the quality is horrible. Uh, you're better off buying your own accessories. Um, the protocol the logic analyzer doesn't do protocol analysis, so it just shows you ones and zeros. It doesn't show you what the ones and zeros. So it doesn't like decode your UART or SPI protocols. So, but that's a software feature. I'm sure that they will fix it. They will be able to fix it because that's just a website upgrade. Right? Uh, and the Wi-Fi access can be flaky. Uh, your mileage may vary. Uh, I had some really good access, and I had some really shitty one. Oh, so quick demo, uh, and I'll set it up somewhere later so you guys can play with it because I'm running out of time. Uh, so this is how the UI looks like. And I have it set up where the wave generator loops back into the scope. I hope you guys can see it. And that doesn't work. I thought you hooked into channel one. Oh yeah, me. it was channel two. Let's try. Trigger. Oh yeah, there you go. So that's a you know a wave generator hooking into channel two. All right. So, so you can zoom in, zoom out like a normal scope. Uh, 
yeah, you can do usual stuff. I probably need to change my my trigger. So you can you can choose trigger levels. You can do everything. the The UI is not the. Oh yeah, the UI is not the most um, you, you know like intuitive for someone who's used to a manual scope. There's no buttons to tweak, but it works. It works all right. Um, this is the logic analyzer bit. I will. Oh, I this came off. Sorry, I'm out of time. I'll, I'll probably just do the demo afterwards. So come check out, uh, and if you want to play with it, touch it, see it. Uh, come find me later. Thanks.